Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk, back again with you guys for another show, for another episode of our Tactical Breakdown series. Now, of course, this is the first time we've been doing this in quite a while, um, and I would be very ignorant and naive if I didn't obviously bring up what's been going on. I'm not going to put it in any title or tag, though, because it seems as soon as you post anything about the virus... Uh, then your virus, uh, your, then your virus, then your show just goes down the pan, basically in terms of what YouTube thinks of it. Um, all I want to say is that I hope you're staying well. I hope you're keeping yourself safe and following the advice that you're being given, because uh, that's all we can do. Um, so yeah, that's all I'm going to say on it. I hope you're well. I hope you're doing good, uh, and it's good to be back and talking to you about Arsenal, considering that football is still completely off the table at the moment. Although it is nice to see the Arsenal admin team putting on some previous games uh, for everyone to watch, which is quite nice. Uh, and the news still rolls on. Player contracts are being dealt with. Aubameyang's apparently off to Barcelona, even though not a ball has been kicked in quite a long time. But we are here at the Guna Talk to continue providing you with some content. Obviously, I cannot promise to do with the... Uh, regularity and continuity of the content right now still working uh, but obviously this is being recorded at half past four in the afternoon at five o'clock there's a press conference which could spell the end to my work for a little bit uh, if they do decide to close the school so we'll have to wait and see in which case content might be able to be put out a little bit more but we'll just have to wait and see what happens but we are here today to talk about Issa Diop uh, the West Ham centre-back uh, who has basically garnered a lot of interest since his arrival from Liga I believe it was Toulouse if I'm not mistaken, um, for a, a decent fee and now is being touted around for over £50 million, which is quite a lot considering Arsenal have already spent nearly £30 million on a centre-back, which will be signing next season and arguably will be signing another one on permanent basis in Pablo Marie. So some interesting times at centre-back, but it does not mean we're not going to focus on the Frenchman. But first off, we do like to throw in some expert insight and I've I got some expert insight for you as we talk to the Athletics' Roshane Thomas, who is their West Ham correspondent. Roshane's going to give you some information about the Frenchman and give you all the insight you could possibly want. Take it away, Roshane. One of his Diop's strengths is his aerial threat. He's very good in the air. He scored three goals for West Ham this season, many of which have come from a set piece, whether that be a corner or a free kick. So he's very good. Uh, he's 23. So he's got plenty of time to improve. He hasn't even reached his peak yet, so that's also very promising. But I'll probably say the weakness tends to uh, outweigh the strength when it comes to Issa Diop. He has a, he has a tendency to uh, have a few lapses in concentration every now and then. I mean, we saw it in the three-three draw against Brighton, Brighton and Hove Albion. Uh, Issa Diop and Ogbonna, which uh, led to I think Pascal Gross's goal. So. We've seen it a few times this season where he just has that tendency to, you know, switch off every now and then. Uh, I'll probably say another weakness is sometimes he can make, like, the odd, the odd error every now and then. I mean, like, when it comes to his decision-making, that could be a lot better. Whether that be just needless challenges, getting a yellow card, that's an area of his game which he could really improve on. And uh, I'll probably say, in terms of a move to uh, Arsenal... I mean, he's been linked to Tottenham and Chelsea this season. And I just feel like at West Ham, because of, like, barring Issy Diop and Obano, the next option is Barbarina. And then you have, obviously, Winston Reed, who's gone out on loan to Sporting Kansas. So Issy Diop, he knows he's going to play week in, week out. And I feel like a move to a team like Arsenal, where, obviously, you have David Luiz and, um, and uh, Mustafi. So he's not guaranteed to be playing week in, week out. And I feel like he needs that. He needs a bit of competition. So that like, every game he plays, he's, he's on his A game. He, he's not going to play like a B game, a, a B plus game, and know next week he'll still be in the team. Because that's how, that's, how that's how it's been this season at West Ham. You know, he could have a poor game, as I mentioned, a 3 3 draw against Brighton, and the next match he's still playing. So I feel like if he were to move to a team like Arsenal, especially someone like playing on someone like Mikel Arteta, he has that pressure of having to play well every every game. So. I mean, it'll be it'll be a good move for him, but I feel like he could do with an extra year at West Ham just to cut out some of the mistakes I mentioned, like being a lot better when it comes to his decision making, you know, not making silly fouls because once you move to a top four team or a top six team like Arsenal, you know, you can't afford to be making those, uh, you know, bad decisions. So apart from that, like I mentioned earlier, he's good in the air, so you know he's going to be a threat from set pieces. So that's an area's game which is really good. And again, I mentioned 23, so he still has plenty of time to improve, but. Yeah, from the time I've been seeing him at West Ham, he definitely could do with a bit more competition, just to 
just to have that bit of consistency in his, in his game. Massive thank you to Roshan. You can check out all of his information in what was the screen just just there as he was chatting. So, of course, in the description too. So, let me know what your thoughts are on Roshan's thoughts in the comments section below. But let's throw into the second section of the video, which is, of course, our stats-based area as we throw in to the heat map. You can see the heat map on your screen. Um, now, I always sort of bring this up first where we look at players and they're a right-sided centre-back of the ones that we're linked to when Saliba coming in was thought to be the right-sided centre-back. So the fact that Diop plays mostly on that side, but as you can see, has deputised on the left now and again, um, does confuse me a bit. The fact that Arsenal are going for right-sided centre-backs, I still, I still find slightly weird. Um, it, he's quite a disciplined player. You don't see that heat transferring towards the opposition half all that often. And when it does, it is in very, very small amounts. A very disciplined player, which I like to see from centre-backs, especially if they were playing next to a more elaborate or adventurous centre-back like William Saliba, for instance. Moving on then to the defensive stats. Very, very key for a defender, of course. We've got defensive duels. 64.9% of those are being won, which in the Premier League is nice. That's something that we should say. He's a Premier League ready defender, and that is definitely making comparisons uh, very easy. And I should say that these statistics are taken from this season up until the point that they last played. Uh, and that's all we've got. <laughs> so recent results and recent fixtures that have been cancelled and postponed obviously don't fall into this. But it's only been a couple of weeks since then. Of course, that does include the Arsenal game too. Um, so 64.9% of those being one of the nearly five duels he partakes in. Aerial duels is very impressive. Over 70% of those are being won from just over four being undertaken. Loose ball, 65.2%. Very similar to the amount of success he has with his defensive duels. That is quite nice. And sliding tackles, he's winning 61% of those. And he's making just... Uh, one of those every other game is, is what the stats are telling us there. Nearly seven interceptions in each game for a centre-back is very good. I like that. And 60, uh, uh, sorry, 6 percent losses are in his own half, which you would expect from a centre-back. But he's only losing six, to, six of those times in each game, which is good and quite disciplined. And the recoveries definitely make up for that. Nearly double the amount of losses, 11.65 recoveries being made, with 7% of those being the opposition half. But he's a centre-back, so you wouldn't expect to see that too much. 4.22 clearances, very good. Fouls, he makes one every game, which leads to a little bit of ill discipline in terms of that area, with 0.32 yellow cards being made. So one yellow card in every three games is quite high. Looking at the passing stats then, because we like to have a centre-back that does pass the ball uh, very, very well, uh, and you can see 84.3% pass accuracy is decent. We'd like to see a centre-back into the higher 80s, but that's still quite solid, especially for a Premier League centre-back with nearly 30 of those being made in each game. 44% accuracy of long passes. We've seen the Arsenal players linked and they've been in the 50s, even the 60s for long passes sometimes. Uh, but he's not the player that's looked upon to be that guy. He is the solid man at the back, and passing for me isn't too key when you've got someone like Saliba coming in and when you've got Mari at the back as well as David Luiz is there too, and Mustafi as well, who has a decent pass record. Of course, we can't forget that. Through passes and crosses aren't too much part of his game, neither is that a second assist and assist. And passing to the final third is quite interesting with a 64.9% accuracy. The exact same success, I believe, as we just saw with his defensive duels. So he's nothing but consistent in terms of these stats here. And he makes just over three of those in each game. Ironically, uh, one pass into the box every other game is weirdly high for a centre-back. Um, but with 13.3% of those actually reaching their target, I'm not going to be focusing on that too heavily as a success. He receives the ball only 17 times in each game, which when you've looked at the amount of times the centre-backs have, re uh, have received the ball that we've looked at so far, it's been more than double that. So that's a very low amount of passes that he's received. Now, take into account that he is playing for West Ham, maybe that comes into it a bit. But still, the centre-backs that we've looked at have received way more passes than that. So that's quite interesting. Forward to back for passes, a very strong ratio, and we'd expect to see something like that. That's definitely unsurprising. If we then move on to the attacking stats, which for a centre-back are always a little bit comical, but still key in some certain areas. He scored a couple of goals this season. In fact, he scored three of them, and you can see from where they've done that, uh, they are in the box. They're not from outside. He doesn't take any wild shots. As I said, he's disciplined. He doesn't venture forward, but he does like to get up. His aerial duel winning around 70% earlier on that we saw clearly is utilised in the box, and he's actually getting, if you look at those there, the shots on target, 63.6% .6 of shots that he's taken are on target. Very good for a centre-back that's typically getting up in the box for headers. That leads to an XG, which is still quite low, which you'd expect, and shot assists also low. But dribbles, 
That there is the telling factor. 0.18 dribbles per game with 40% of those being won. He's not a proactive centre-back in that sense. He's just not. He's no nonsense and he does the job as it should be done for those players that just want to win the ball back, get the ball in our possession as soon as possible and turn play over. Offensive duels, 1.33 of 35.1% success rate. You can interpret that yourselves. It's fairly obvious to say that he's, as we've already mentioned, and overkilled it right now. He doesn't get involved in that sense. He's just not that type of centre-back, leading to low touches in the box, low offsides and low progressive runs with low fouls being suffered also. So there you go. Everything that you could possibly want and need regarding Issa Diop. In terms of an injury record, he was injured uh, once long-term during his time at Toulouse and he missed eight games because of a back issue. And that was in 16-17, which hasn't happened since. So injuries are completely clear in terms of what you're looking at, muscular issues, uh, in the knees and the legs and, and elsewhere. So And he's never had like a serious knee injury or, or an ankle injury or something like that. So that's certainly something that's a plus two. Is he worth the money? Probably, considering the fact that he's a Premier League-ready centre-back that's done a very, very decent job that's garnered interest from a lot of big clubs, not just in England but around Europe, it probably tells you that this guy is the real deal and still at a decent age that he can develop a lot more as well but that's just my thoughts and i'm very very keen to know what you guys think in the comment section below so please do not hesitate to comment we've had some really fantastic support for the channel over the last couple of weeks or so i've mentioned to the members that we've had that the member content hasn't been able to be pushed out as regularly as i'd like this month they've got their article which basically was a massive apology uh, because of what's been going on with that but there is going to be a step up in content i hope i'm planning on getting the member content out there as soon as possible but with what's going on in the world right now and those that could do interviews there's just really not that much to talk about so interestingly it'll be sort of weird to see what sort of chats we can have with the guys over the coming weeks the podcast will hopefully return this weekend as well uh, I was away in Nottingham last week and hence why it couldn't be put out um, but hopefully we're going to get the podcast to you which is going to be a very laid back relaxed chat about what's been going on probably quite a casual one about what we've been doing to deal with the coronavirus situation so that could be quite interesting I look forward to speaking to you very very soon please like the video if you enjoyed it please subscribe to the channel if you're new and we'll see you again very very soon I hope and as always up the Arsenal <laughs>